Sunshine's Corner, being brought to you by Quint and Rishi Studer. And good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are you on this beautiful Tuesday? Your sunshine stepping in with the Sunshine's Corner. And as you know, this is the place that we can talk about anything and feel safe doing it. I want to invite you today to make sure you sit back and relax because we've got such an informative show for you today that you don't want to miss out on anything. And why do I say that? Because it's all about the elections. It's all about you casting your vote. And I want you to know every aspect that you need to take to make sure there will be nothing there to stop you from casting your vote this coming up because the primaries win next week, my dear people. And I want to welcome in two people today that's going to help us get that message conveyed to you so you can tell somebody and tell somebody and tell somebody else. This is what you got to do to make sure that you are being counted. And I want to say good morning to Mr. Robert Bender from the Supervisor of Election. He is the supervisor. Good morning, Robert. Good morning, Sunshine. How are you doing? I'm doing great. And of course, I got my community uh, advocate here. We're talking about Ms. Yolanda R. Tish, she's out here with us today. Good morning, Miss Sunshine. How are you, darling? I'm well. <laughs> well, look, thank you guys for getting up so we can get this message out to people because, look, we're down seven days before the primaries. Can you believe the time has just flown that fast? It's just going like, oh, well, we were talking about how hot it was. I'm glad. I, I know, right? <laughs> We've been spending a lot of time inside. You got that <laughs> Getting right. ready for the election. No doubt about it. But, you know, Robert, there's a lot that everybody needs to know. I mean, right. don't assume because I'll tell you what my mother used to tell us, dress us so when you met, you assume you know what's happening. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's just make sure that you got everything in order and that you can go out and cast your vote. There are questions you may not be sure of, so now's the time to get those questions answered right. so that it won't be any type delay in getting the message out, correct? Correct, right. correct. And so what we need to do, let's talk about some of the things whereas that's coming up on next week. What people need to do, number one, let's talk about early voting. Okay. So we're in early voting right now. It yeah. uh, started on last Saturday, yes. 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day until August Saturday, August 17th. Mm -hmm. We have 10 locations throughout Escambia County, and a voter can go to any one of those 10 locations to vote. Right. So we call it ballot on demand. You walk in. You have to bring your ID, a picture ID, a signature ID uh, that you present to them. Make sure you are who right. you are. Uh, and then they'll print your ballot and you, you vote and, you, and you, it gets counted right right then. Absolutely, um, absolutely. And so we have Brownsville Community Center. We have yeah. the, the downtown main library. We have our office, uh -huh. Supervisor of Elections office. Um, we have the Bellevue Library, the Southwest Library, uh, the Extension Office. Oh, God, you got inside of town. Club. I know. Molino <laughs> and Century, yes. UWF, so those students. That, and that's in school. Uh, right, it's the Performing Arts Center at UWF. Uh, and then Asbury Place over in, in Cordova Park, you know, off well, Ninth Avenue. You, so. you can't miss it, so you can't say you don't have anywhere to go. No. You cannot say that you don't have any place to go up uh, to get your vote in. So listen, you said something signature. Is that just yes. a? Is that your driver's license with your signature? It, it is. So so what oh, happens okay. is when you come in, you present your driver's license, right. and then we'll, you'll sign the pad attesting that you you live where you where you're registered. Right. Uh, and and <laughs> and then so they'll they'll match it to the signature on the ID. So, so oh, I got gotcha. you. And and so but that what that also does is that we capture that signature so that we can use if you do a vote by mail ballot in the future, we can go back and look at the signature that you do at the polls. Uh, and, and, okay, and, exactly. and validate it so no because we know it's a known signature because exactly. you've uh, given your ID but you have you have to have a picture ID absolutely yes. question here now you're on the community a lot Yolanda what yes. are you running into as far as when it comes to getting people motivated to get them out there to vote what I'm running into is young people who have decided they're just not voting really yes it's it's unfortunate because as we were talking about earlier when you have just the elders voting, uh -huh. then we wind up having the elder vote. Uh -huh. So that means the things that are pertinent to the younger community are not being addressed because we don't have any representation. Right. So if you don't represent in voting, then you wind up having somebody who may not have the same <laughs> values and so understanding that you are have. you encouraging them to find out about the candidates oh yes and we and I think the biggest thing is that everyone that's an advocate and I think everyone is an advocate because um, you can be an advocate just for your younger generation in your household to persuade them or move them, give them the knowledge and the understanding of each person running uh -huh. so that they can make a good political vote. And then when they do, when they go to the ballots to uh -huh. win, to send to their the ballots uh -huh. into bowls, then they can make a good, adequate condition, well, con decision. Because I gotcha. if not, then we have 
what we call bad representation. <laughs> oh my God. But you know what I'm finding out? Also, Robert, I'm running into a lot of younger people. I'm just being transparent today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of younger people now saying they're going Republican. Yes. Have you been, have you been, run, have you heard that? Been run, I'm telling you, there are a lot of younger people coming to and ask, they have come to me. No, uh, Sunshine, I'm going, I, I, I'm voting Trump this year. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just being yes. real. And I'm wondering why. Mm -hmm. uh, do you run into that? Because you're out there. I'm pretty sure you don't get to, you don't I, get I, to I, see yeah, what it is. Yeah, I right. know. <laughs> I, we, we just process the paperwork and, and make sure they get the chance to voice their, they voice their, their, their voice. Yes. Um, but, um, you know, it, it, it can vary, you know, but I, I think that's why it, it is important to, exactly. to pick the candidates. Oh, yes. Um, you know, you may align with a certain party, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, ultimately we want the best representation yes. for the people. No doubt. Yes. Question. If a person, let's say if I am not, you know, if I were Democrat or if I were Republican, but there's a person on the other side that I want to vote for, can I just do that? You, not this election. Not in the primary. I, 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 well, let me back. So we have... In, in District 1 County District and District 3 County District, there's a universal primary. So it's two members of the same party uh -huh. that don't that the winner would not face a challenger in November. Okay. And so those two races are on everybody's ballot for that district. So so in District uh -huh. 1, you have Vicki Campbell and Jim right. Faxlanger, who are Republicans, but they show up on the Democrat ballot and the NPA ballot in the primary. So everyone gets to vote for one of those two candidates in this election. Uh -huh. The winner is, uh, is elected. The, they don't face anybody. Same thing with, with District 3. You have two Democrats. You have Larry Williams, who's in there now. Right. And then Chase Andy Romangano, who is challenging both Democrats. Uh, and so those appear on all ballots in District 3. And whoever, whoever wins that election will be elected. Unbelievable. But other than that, we and only vote for the, you the, know, we're a closed primary you system. Gotcha. Right, you're a closed primary system. But then you also have your NPA, so your school board yes. races. We don't have any city council races right now, but mm -hmm. if you did, you know, like mayor two years ago, right. every, those were that was on everybody's ballot style. So, no, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I got another question, but somebody's want to call and ask oh, something perfect. already. Okay, great. <laughs> I love it so. Uh, good morning, and good morning. Can you hear me now? I see you on the phone, but um, the wireless caller, but I don't hear you. Uh, perhaps. Um, okay, now I can hear something. Hello. Yes, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. My question is, is, I wanted to know, did they mail out any sample ballots? Yes, ma'am. Uh, so we, all the sample ballots are in the mail. Uh, we did a full page ad in Sunday's paper, um, but uh, the sample ballots are in the mail. If you haven't gotten them, you will, uh, 170,000 of them or so. Whoa. We send one to every voter. Um, and so if you haven't gotten it, it hopefully it comes in the mail today. Did you get that, ma'am? Yes. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You have thank a great, you. have a great day. And and but let me also thank you. Bye bye. So bye -bye. if you haven't gotten that sample ballot yet, uh, you know we we had 227 different styles that we sent out because you have to make sure that the the precinct information is correct, that the ballot's right, uh, and so and then it took a little bit longer to get done. Uh, Unbelievable. And so, uh, uh, but you can go online to our website, uh, scambiavotes.gov. Uh, you can check on the Am I Registered link and enter in your, your name, your birth date, and it'll bring up your precinct uh -huh. information, it'll show if you're registered, uh, and it'll give you a link to do a sample ballot. It's your specific sample ballot. Uh, but as I said, we also had the, had the full page ad in the PNJ this past uh, you Sunday. Got to, you covered it, right? You covered it. We, we got another call. Somebody okay. got, oh, this is great. We are yeah. filled up with questions yes. today. This is what I'm talking about, my people. The only crazy question is the one that's not asked. Yes. All right, here we go. Good morning. Good morning. Good, and good morning, Sunshine. Good morning. I just want to call it to know that I placed my uh, vote by mail ballot in the mailbox this morning. Uh oh. And I want to thank you so much and all the guests that keep on informing us on all the information about the election. Oh, well, thank you. We're going to do our best. That's why yes. you say you step into Sunshine's Corner. You got it. <laughs> and, and just so you know, you can track your ballot, so you can make sure that it's been received by our office. We have a, a link to track my ballot. Um, so, you, uh, like I said, you can make sure it's, it's, it's been received, that your vote gets counted, um, and, uh, or you can call the office to, to check later in the week. We'd be happy to help you thank with that. Thank you. Yep. All right, and thank you, uh, Dr. Martin. <laughs> 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 have a great day, doll. Bye-bye.
And I see, this is what I'm talking about, everybody. Please don't be, uh, I, I tell you all the time, sometimes we'll say, well, I'm not sure, but I don't know how to ask. And I've got something I want to ask you, Robert. And then I want your comments on this as well, Yolanda. You know, I, I hear you say, let's go to the website. Let's go to the website. Let's say they are seniors. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's not comfortable. Yep. They may not even own a laptop. Mm -hmm. Okay. How can we get them to make sure that they've got everything mm -hmm. covered? Uh, what they don't sure. know how to. Some of them don't. They, no. With today's and, technology, they don't turn that thing on. And and that's and that's why we 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 answer our phones when you call in. Okay. So if you want to call in, if you're more comfortable with that, uh, the number to the office is eight five zero five nine five. Three nine zero zero. Uh, right before we came on the air, I did hear that our phones were down. I'm, I'm maybe checking it in a commercial <laughs> break to see if they're back up. They burned up. Uh, but uh, but no, we we can handle a lot over the phone mm -hmm. uh, like that. Sometimes we may say, hey, you know, we can mail you something. Uh, but speaking of the vote by mail ballot, it, it's return postage paid. So we've already paid for the postage oh, really? for you to to mail your ballot back. Um, and, and again, as I said, you can also check to make sure that it's been received and that your vote gets counted. Um, all things that we can handle with you on the phone if you're not technical savvy, Absolutely. Uh, technology savvy. And, and so, uh, but, but I, I mean, I think that's important. Again, just one less hassle that people have to yes. do with trying to find a stamp and get in. They can just put it in the envelope, drop it in the, in the postal box and, and, and know go. that's going to get to us. Absolutely. Well, that's a great thing. Now, Yolanda, we were talking about this and I wanted to keep you because I know you're out in the community yes. a lot. Mm -hmm. When it comes to that, when you, even with some of the elderly mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. I hear, I had, a, uh, it was a call that came in uh, on a show that I had a month or so ago uh, whereas this lady was talking about what why should I vote why mm -hmm. should I vote mm -hmm. how is it that we got to make sure even though some things it, life is difficult right mm -hmm. now we're living in a time right now that mm -hmm. things are really difficult yes. it has changed yes but in order to make sure that our elderly our young people everybody across the board understand the importance yes. that we'll never get the change if you don't vote I mean yes. because that's how you be a part yes. of making the decisions Definitely. how do you convey that to people to make them understand the importance of what everybody died for yes. so that we could have this right yes I feel the importance is to let them understand teach them information especially the elder who, who cannot go online mm -hmm bring information to them about each candidate. But we also have to remind them that your forefathers died for this mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And not only they died for this right, especially for minority women, uh -huh. we need that vote out there because this, this local vote um, definitely impacts our national, our U.S. presidency. So if you don't start on the small scale voting, or I shouldn't call it the small scale, the local, local. Sc uh, scale voting, then you're going to also send more Republicans or more Democrats to the party to be in a chair that may make decisions for you that don't reflect you. So if we're not reflecting ourselves, who is reflecting us? Uh -huh. So then we have to be very careful that we don't lose the rights, uh -huh. the um, privilege, mm -hmm. the honor mm -hmm. of being able to vote. And in that also um, Council on Aging helps with elderlies just like they right. do with taxes as far as understanding and uh -huh. helping them to get online to help vote. I hear you. So. Well, now Robert, another thing when it comes out with all of this that we got to do that's coming up with the uh, local, the primary that's next week, it is so utterly important. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that it's already here. Yes. Right. I can't believe it. Uh, now that we are there mm -hmm. and trying to make sure that people are understanding these steps. Now there is a when you go vote, let me ask you this because you are supervisor of sure. election. Let's say if I turn in, if I vote and I turn in my ballot, I'm there. Mm -hmm. And if there's markings on it, if there's something on sure. it, won't that disqualify that? It, it, not necessarily. Uh -huh. um, and so, so one, uh, a, a person can get up to three ballots. Uh, okay. So if you make a mistake on your ballot, um, even if you haven't turned it in yet, but you, you accidentally vote for the wrong person, you can go up and say, I, I would like an, another ballot. Okay. Uh, and so there, there's going to be an envelope. There's some new procedures in place on how we handle with that. Uh -huh. um, and, and we'll issue a new ballot. If you do it again, we'll probably ask you to go to a, a different machine yeah. okay. um, that, that allow, that's, it's, you know, more for voters with disabilities, but anybody can use it. But um, your your votes aren't locked in until you actually hit submit. So okay. if you want to go back and forth, you can. It's it's um, so so one. It, it's it's okay if some you know sometimes right. marks will be get read uh -huh. um, if they're not near the bubble mm -hmm. that you're trying to fill in. They'll still right. be read. Mm -hmm. And there's actually a text message going around telling yeah, people about this. Yeah, that's why I this. got that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, so it's it's disinformation is is really what it is. Okay. Um, and I would also say is that. We, we let the voter put the ballot into the into uh -huh. the tabulator um, and and 
stay there until you can see that, I would say the little hamster wheel runs, and then it says, you hear the ballot drop, and it says your vote's been counted. And that's right. usually when the, the mm -hmm. poll worker will hand you the sticker that says you voted. If there's an issue with the ballot not being read, a prompt will come up on the screen. So you'll know immediately if your ballot's been read or not. Okay. And then it'll ask you what you want to do. Do you want to go ahead and cast it? There may be a, a race that you did overvote where you did more than one. Mm -hmm. um, and it would still count the other races mm -hmm. in that on that, really? on that ballot, mm -hmm. just not that one. Um, and so if you say yes, go ahead and cast it, it'll, it'll, it'll be voted. Um, and all those other races will count. Uh, if not, they'll spit it back out. They'll maybe try to see what's going on and then see if you want another ballot. So, God. but I will say this is that one, uh, the type of, of ballot that you're voting is written at the top. So we don't need to put a mark to indicate okay. if you're a Republican or a Democrat. Mm -hmm. um, it's also in the precinct style. So we're a closed primary state. So if you're a registered Democrat, you can only vote the Democrat mm -hmm. ballot. If you're a Republican, you can only vote on the, on the Republican ballot. Mm -hmm. NPA has a separate ballot as well. Um, and, and so we don't need to mark anything <laughs> to indicate what you are. Um, but again, we also have people from all from both parties or, or non parties uh -huh. um, being poll workers. So that's how we have that yes. balance within the precinct. Yes. So um, you know, again, they would step up and say something as as well if if they see an abnormal amount of people's ballots getting rejected for mm -hmm. some you know. Right. And so um, and that's that's the great thing about our process is have that balance. Is that there is no politics? There is, you know, it's I'm it's sure. we're there to run the election um, on election day and during these early vote days, Absolutely. and and to make sure that the people's voices get heard. Absolutely. Now, let Hold me on one second, okay. Yolanda. Hold that thought right there. Okay. Uh, I know she was ready because right. I saw her head. <laughs> okay. But I, everybody, listen. We are talking about a very important topic today: making sure that you've got all your. T's and I's and everything else crossed so you'll be able to cast your vote cut up in the primary next week. Stay close though. We're going to continue to talk with uh, Mr. Robert Bender, Supervisor of Election and the Advocate for the Community, Ms. Yolanda Ortiz that's here with us today. Stay close and if you've got questions, write the number down 850-432-7768 you can be a part of the conversation right here, Sunshine's Corner. Empire Truck Sales, located at 2255 West Detroit Boulevard in Pensacola, is your Freightliner, Western Star, Detroit Diesel, and Cummins dealer for Northwest Florida. Open seven days a week, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., Saturdays and Sundays, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., providing sales, service, and parts. Empire Truck Sales is also your Oasis dealer for Freightliner custom chassis RV and motorhome repairs. Running I-10 will get you in. Many who consider facial plastic surgery are concerned their results will look unnatural. But with over 20 years of serving the Pensacola community, his thousands of satisfied patients have made Dr. Derek Jones a trusted reconstructive and facial plastic surgeon known for industry-leading results that look natural. Call 850-484-FACE to schedule a consultation at one of our locations in Pensacola and Gulf Breeze. I'm Dr. Derek Jones. Trust your face to a facial plastic surgeon. The Lloyd's Glass and Crick Calibration Services is a one-stop shop because you can come get your windshield replaced and right behind that replacement at the same appointment, we will calibrate the cameras and when you leave, everything's ready to go. There's no need to go to the dealership or there's no need to come back for another appointment. We just take care of it at one time. We put the customer first and we strive to do everything right the first time. Lloyd's Glass and Correct Calibration Services, your one-stop shop with same-day service. There are many reasons someone may need in-home care, whether it may be respite care, then recovering from surgery, or having a chronic condition. Having someone dedicated and reliable is imperative. Supplemental Support Care Services was created to provide to those who are in need with quality care that they deserve in the home. Taking it a step further, our main goal is to ensure that Supplemental Support Care Services is where the love and care is top priority. And welcome back to Sunshine's Corner. We are so into this conversation. David said, hold it. I mean, <laughs> I love it with a perfect kind of love, okay? But no, we were into this topic. I want to come back to that because I really want to show people the importance of that, yes. that right. phony text that's been going around. Like I said, I've received that text at least two or three times. Yes. Uh, okay, I just finished a course, and it's, I'm a very... Uh, um, 
uh, no, I'm somebody that you can trust. Right, mm -hmm. trustworthy friend. I'm a trustworthy friend, right. so look, please don't let a mark on anything that your ballot gonna get kicked back. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, but we were talking how that's not the case, because if yes. it's outside the bubble, yes. right. it's not gonna do anything. Yes. Uh, I mean, depending on how close it is, mm -hmm. but, right. mm -hmm. but uh, no, so you think about it, the, the machines that we use, they're, they're like uh, the SAT, you know, they're looking, yeah. the, all, they don't they don't see names they're just looking for a, a mark mm -hmm. in a specific area and if they find that mark in that area then that vote gets cast for that person mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. and so that's why even if you know you may not fu fully bubble in the circle mm -hmm. it, it can still get counted or as you were saying earlier if you just put a dot on there yeah. it it can it can read that there's a marking um, and and then it may come to so like these vote by mails we actually had one the other day where somebody had filled in a complete bubble next to one voter, but there was a dot in the mm -hmm. middle of the, the oval. And so I look at the guide that the state hands out about voter mm -hmm. intent, and they say, you ignore the dot. Mm -hmm. So we, we really? said it was a yes. vote for the bubble that yes. was completely filled in. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's the canvassing board. That's just a slip board. of yes. the pencil. Yes. Well, something like that. But so the canvassing board is, is the board that oversees the election. It's a three-member panel mm -hmm. with two alternates. There's a county judge who's the chairman of the committee. Uh, I'm on there and then a representative from the county. So I was actually that county representative in the last presidential election <laughs> in, in 2020. So that's how I really got to, to know and understand and work in elections. So all of those vote by mail ballots and everything that we did in 2020, I, I did those and so, or helped with those under right. David Stafford. Um, and and Hi, so, David. yes. <laughs> and, um, and, and so that's what we do. You know, sometimes when, you know, you'd be surprised what comes back on the ballot. Mm -hmm. I mean, coffee, orange juice stains. <laughs> yeah. also, we think they're coffee and orange juice. You know, <laughs> you know. I mean, and, and so, um, y you know, it, it, but so if things it, happen, it, things happen. Um, ballots sometimes get ripped or mm -hmm. something like that. And so um, there's a process that we have to make sure that that vote gets counted. It goes in front of that board. Now, we, we can't contact the voter once the envelope's been opened because we don't, we can't, there's no way to track whose it is, right? So, so once that, that envelope is, is open and the ballot comes out, any, any way to associate the ballot with the voter is, is gone. And so that's why we, that's why there's so much mm -hmm. information on how to determine a, a voter. Uh -huh. And actually there was another one that we had where um, the last third of the ballot was gone and- Ripped? It was ripped, it was, it was not in the envelope, but their vote was for that race was, was above the cut. And oh. so because there was one vote there, we counted that vote um, for that individual they, they voted on. Mm -hmm. Man, your job is tough. Yeah. There's, I mean. there's a lot, but but again, that's 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 our goal is to make sure that that the people's voice gets heard. Mm -hmm. that, right. And so that's you know just because there's a mistake or mm -hmm. it doesn't run, mm -hmm. we we want to make sure that that the voice the voice gets heard. Most certainly. So we Yolanda, have, I did cut you off before we okay. went to the break, but yeah. now let's go back to you, okay? Yes. <laughs> so I I believe we need to just um, address the importance of making sure before you push submit. Uh -huh. that we are marking the candidate of our choice. Because if we're not, then if you don't catch it before you push submit, let's say someone decided they didn't want to vote in a, in an area. If you make a pencil mark within that bubble and push submit, it's still going to receive that vote. So we have to be very careful that before we don't push submit, so yes, don't be so quick, read it before you push submit to make sure your vote is casted for the candidates of your choice. Absolutely. And everybody, we want to make sure that you uh, understand that we're talking next week is mm -hmm. the primary. So don't think that you've got six weeks. Mm -hmm. no, no, you've got seven days. Seven days. August 20th, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Oh, that's going to be a is, day. Is, it's, it's a long day for everybody. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've been working, you know, the last couple weekends every day for that. But um, but no, I mean, we're, we're here for the voters. And so, uh, yes, yeah, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. On election day, you can only go to your precinct. Yes. Right. And, and so when you get your sample ballot, if you haven't gotten it already, that precinct location will be written on there. Uh, and then we will also have a list of, of all of the uh, precincts in the paper uh, on Sunday. Okay. Um, this coming Sunday. Now, what's that right now? That, there's a card. That's your voter registration card. That's a voter registration card. 
Uh, so you would have your your name and address on there. It tells you your voting location is that precinct number and address. Uh -huh. um, and, and then it just has some other information. Now, this is just information for you. You don't need to bring this to- You don't have to bring you your don't have to bring card. It. We just want your, your photo ID with signature. So don't come in with so that card. You, you can bring it in and here's the acceptable forms of identification. Uh, as you can see, we, we have a lot that, that you can that you can use. Uh, I was actually at the main library on Sunday and right. somebody came in, couldn't find their, their driver's license. And and so he used his military ID oh. and then along with a credit card that had a signature on it. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? And so, it, I mean, you can combine them, things like that. Um, but that's, those are Ooh, we, even your concealed weapon ID. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, but it's so that's many things on there. Everybody who's watching, now we've got this up on the screen so you can see the things that you need to make sure that you can get mm -hmm. into your precinct. Now, don't be going anywhere next week. Now, you got to go to your precinct. You got to go to your precinct. But but between now and Saturday at 6 uh -huh. p.m., you can go to any one of our 10 early vote locations. Absolutely. And uh, go ahead. And so the early vote len ends in next week. But the primary, so if you don't get into early voting, which, as he said, we have 10 locations for um, early voting, but the next voting, the end, is 84 days out. Correct. So the general election, general. the general yeah. election is 84 days out. Can you believe uh, day, it? Day before somebody's birthday, if I remember correctly. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right. November Woo! 5th is, is general that's election right. day. That's right. It's November yes. 6th. Yes. You had a good memory. Uh, well. <laughs> okay, I'll be waiting for my gift. Yes. <laughs> and then, so no, and then that November the 4th. Now we can vote early voting in 10 locations, but on the general. Um, of elections voting, then we can only vote at our precinct, correct? Well, we'll still have the early voting. So yes. we actually expand it from eight days to 13 days. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? And we expand the hours from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So okay. we give more. And, and the way I look at it is, is you're, you're going to, so if you think about the 2022 general election, uh, we had a little over 100,000 voters mm -hmm. uh, vote. We'll probably be closer to 170,000 for the general election. Yeah. Good. So Good we have 208,000 registered voters right now in Escambia County. And so if you have about 80% turnout, you're going to look at about that 170,000 mark. That's a lot. So, that says so, something though, uh, right. Robert. Well, that's what we want. Uh, we'd love to get it higher. Exactly. Um, but to think we're going to have 70% have more voters yes. than what we did two years ago in the general. So that's why we really expand, expand that early voting. Uh, again, because we want people to have a, a good voting experience. We don't want them to get disenfranchised Absolutely. by having to stand in long lines. Absolutely. That, and that's what I always tell kids when I go into schools. And, and I said, tell your parents how easy it is that, that you want them to take you to go mm -hmm. vote and that it was an easy experience. You're you know, in and out five, ten, mm -hmm. ten minutes. Uh, you know, especially during these early voting hours, you may not have anybody in front of you. You, you may right. have that's two or three people in front of you. So uh, you don't see those long lines. And, and that's the great thing that Florida's done is, mm -hmm. is have these three ways to vote. Um, you know, the vote by mail, the early vote, and, and on election day. And we really spread it out pretty evenly. It's almost one third, one third, one third. Uh, on how people cast their ballot. And, and again, that just makes the process smoother for everyone. So Absolutely. I, yeah. Did I hear you say you go into the schools and educate them on how about voting? We do, we do different things. So I, th I think right after I saw you last time, we helped with the Sunshine Readers for the state of Florida. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and where the kids got, if they had read a certain number of books, mm -hmm. they got to vote on their favorite book. Yes. Really, and teaching so, them. And so we go in and, and, and run this election for the, for the state, for the state organization that, that helps decide this That's book. That's great. Uh, and so we have, we'll go to an elementary school and, and, the, and the classes that are eligible and the students uh -huh. that are eligible uh, will come in and, and cast their ballot using uh, actual election equipment. Really? That is a good thing oh, to yes. teach them early. Yes. yes. Excellent. So everybody, you see we're taking every, uh, every area to pick up everything that we need to pass on to you to make sure that you get out next week or today because of the primary that's coming up on next week. Now, if you want to talk or have questions that you're not quite sure about, 850-432-7768, you can call or text and be a part of this conversation as well. Because see, I, I just love for us to talk. I'll say, I tell everybody every day, don't sit and wonder if this is a good question because I feel like this, the only crazy question is the one that's not asked. Right. Because when you don't know and then you find, oops, if mm -hmm. only I had, mm -hmm. just like the lady was talking earlier. I'm, I'm concerned with some of the elderly people and mm -hmm. uh, I know a lot of churches mm -hmm. do this. Yes, uh, let's say to get to the polls, yes. that they have buses and bus mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. to get people out to vote. You're in the community. Yes. That happens a lot? Yes. Not enough. 
Okay. It happens a lot, but not enough. Okay. It's, it's just like any area that we have in anything in the community. We don't have enough churches that have vans or buses to get people out. So if you re contact other churches, you may find a church near you that would pick you up or you could go to, to ride to the polls. There is also a list um, um, publicly I think you can look on Facebook to find it where there are churches that are busing people to the polls. Okay. Some churches are publicly publicly um, advertising through their churches or online. Mm -hmm. But if I would, could say, I would definitely reach out to find out if your church was not busing. There mm -hmm. are not enough because there's not enough to get people amenities. Out of buses at each church. I got you. So, yeah. yes. And I, I know David Hawkins would sometimes yes. give rides too. Yes, you did. Yes. Who? David Hawkins. Oh, the funeral home. Yes, sir. Yes, oh. ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and Real yeah. Women Radio. Not, not in that vehicle, though. Not different vehicle. <laughs> and Real Women Radio. And so Real Women Radio, I know they get out with the bus even pre-voting to get people impacted with voting and signed up. Wow. So, yeah. Well, let's give David a big shout because if he's out picking up people. Yes. I mean, come on, David. Yes. You don't want to ride in that car, but you know, hey. <laughs> But look, we got a text message that came in to, of course, then for you, Robert. Now, what was that? Uh, ask me that once more, Jen. Um, uh, she was talking. Sure, yeah. How is it that you ensure that the integrity of the voting system is secure? Great. How Great do question. you do that? Great question. Um, so, um, so there's a lot of questions about the integrity of that. So, one, the tabulators that we use in the early voting and election day, they're only plugged in to, to the outlet. They only get power um, and they do modem the results to us at the end of the, of the night. Um, but that is, uh, it's really just a convenience to get those results out quicker. Those are unofficial results. Um, we get uh, the official results from the device itself. We have uh -huh. runners that bring the physical thumb drive with all results on there. Um, but this is a great thing that we, I'm excited about this. So we started a, an audit process mm -hmm. in March. Uh, it was something that was already acquired um, that we will run every ballot that we get, whether vote by mail, early vote, or election day through this independent audit system. And we will make sure that it allows us to audit 100% of the ballots so 100% of the precincts, 100% of the races to have a secondary tabulation system that counts to make sure that the original count is accurate. Wow. So, yes. So, so that, that answers that question. So, I mean, so, that and so that's the thing, right? So let's, let's think about what Florida does there, right? We have paper ballots. Mm -hmm. So as I say, I can always go back and look at the voters intent. Mm -hmm. um, so we can look at the voters intent. Um, we, we have uh, equipment that's been approved by the state. There's only two uh, types of equipment that have been approved by the state to tabulate ballots uh, and so we have one of those and then we have this this audit system that we have in place uh, and then and again we go back and compare so that's actually how we found I don't want to say discrepancies but you know we were expecting to get a, a ballot style three and we got ballot style seven back or, or something okay. like that so how did that happen um, and so we, we had three of those in March, which is still a great, great election. Absolutely. It's absolutely. not people that shouldn't have voted. We all had the same ballot in March. So again, it's nothing like that. It didn't change any of the results, but, um, you know, sometimes things just happen. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, but, uh, hold yeah. on, Yolanda. I know uh, I, I catch her every time. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? You got to ask earlier time. than the commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, we got to go to break. But uh, please keep your questions coming, uh, 850-432-7768, and please do not delay. This is the time that you can make sure because Robert will not be back on yeah. now before the 7th. I mean, before the 7 days is up, before the 20th. So what you need to do if you got a question for Robert or Yolanda, now's the time to ask that question. Stay with us because we're coming back with more on what you need to do to make sure that your vote is counted. Coming up right here at Sunshine's Corner. Need a new outfit for a special occasion? Look no further than Viola's Men's Apparel. Viola's has been providing the latest styles and accessories in Pensacola for over 20 years now. We have clothes for every occasion and we offer consultations and group discounts. You can trust that our care, quality, and class will be unmatched. Viola's Men's Apparel, for all of your men wear needs. 
This is Wayne at Icon Automotive in Robertsdale, Alabama, and I want to tell you more about our powertrain warranty forever. It comes with any vehicle we sell that has 80,000 miles or less at no additional cost to you. We put our vehicles through a tough safety and mechanical inspection before it can have the powertrain warranty forever, giving you a peace of mind with your purchase. This warranty is good anywhere in the country and it covers 100% of parts and labor with no mileage limit and is covered as long as you own the vehicle. Come pick out your dealership car at non-dealership pricing with the powertrain warranty forever at Icon Automotive. Watch a new episode of Crime Stoppers Wanted Fugitives every Friday at 6 p.m. Hosted by Sergeant Melanie Peterson and David Craig. Your tips may be eligible for a cash reward featuring items about officer training, various aspects of police work, and crime prevention information. You'll hear about upcoming family-friendly engagement events as well. Don't miss Crime Stoppers Wanted Fugitives every Friday at 6 p.m. Go back to being a kid again. Head on over to Bubba's Sweet Spot. We've got house-made caramels, fudge, pralines, marshmallows, and lots and lots and lots and lots of chocolate. Looking for more traditional candy? We've got you. Our walls are covered head to toe in all the classics, from taffy to gummies and lollipops to gumballs. And don't forget our ice cream. With endless toppings and dipped cones, we've got what you're craving. Let us take you back to a time when every problem could be solved with candy at Bubba's Sweet Spot. And welcome back to Sunshine's Corner on this day because we are making some, oh, we're waking, we're setting records. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, we're talking that because we talk off camera a lot. Yes. But I cut you off that time. I'm not yeah. going to do that again. It's okay. No, okay. It's Sunshine Show. Uh, uh, <laughs> so she said there's only one more commercial break, so she might not. <laughs> well, my question was, we looked at earlier the polls and you have a system that tells Democratic versus Republican. And what I saw was we had about half of Democrats that had voted versus the Republicans. And so I just want to put the plea out that no matter what the party, that people get out and vote because, like you said, some representatives have already made it to the primary or to the um, general because mm -hmm. they don't have anybody running against them. But the importance of the parties that have three candidates to put the best candidate in the general, we need to get out and vote so you can know who's going to represent you in right. the general. Absolutely. So again, we, we have those two ECUA races. That again, whoever wins this a week from now will, will be elected. They won't face off in, in November. Uh, the other thing is you have some school board races. You have uh, uh, two school board races, District 4, District 5, um, and that if one of those individuals uh, gets 50% plus one vote from the votes cast, they're elected. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're waiting to November to vote for the school board race, you may not have that, that chance. And I'd say that's very similar to what happened with the mayor. D.C. Right. Reeves got over 50% of the vote during the primary uh, uh, amongst all the other candidates running for mayor. And because he did that, he was elected and didn't have a November race. Wow. And so, um, and, and so, right. So just because, you know, you, there may be other things on the ballot that, that you want to vote on that, that won't show up in, in, in November. Okay. And, and so, this, and these are be people that will be representing you, yeah. or you have a say in in how in who your party puts up mm -hmm. to represent the party in November. Absolutely. We got a question that came in. Uh, she said that uh, this young lady phoned, but she said, "I just don't want to be on the air." Uh, why she did not receive her vote by mail? It didn't get to her this year. Okay. Oh, that's a great, great question. Um, and so. Uh, one, the, the law changed, so there, there may be, uh, you know, we have about 10,000 voters that don't have a, a ballot that are eligible. So you have NPA and District 2, they don't have a ballot because there's, there's, there's not a, one of those universal primaries or not the school board races. Okay. Um, uh, but if, if, if she wants to call our office, 850-595-3900, they can pull her record and make sure, or she can check on our website if she wants to, am I registered, and it'll let her know if she has a vote by mail request on file. Oh, okay. So, but this has changed since the last uh, election. Uh, the, to, to have a vote by mail request, you have to make that every election cycle. So oh. January 1, 2023, all previous requests were wiped clean. Start over. Start over. And you need to give your driver's license or the last four of your social when you make that request. It's, it's too late to make the request for, for next week. Uh, but you could go ahead and make that request for November if you want. For wanted. the prime, I mean, but, for the general. Yes, but okay. if, if if she'll call our office, eight five zero five nine five three nine zero zero, 
Um, they'll, they'll let her know if a ballot was mailed. She may not have gotten it. Right. Um, and if that's the case, um, we can she can come by the office and pick it up. If right. she wants a replacement, she can go to one of the 10 voting locations or, or go on election day. So okay. again, it's not until we get that back do we, we say that she's voted. So uh, I, I apologize if, if it hasn't gotten to you. Um, we did have a couple that, that said they never got it, and so we had to send a replacement in the mail. Uh -huh. um, but uh, if, again, a lot of people are are, you know, are not aware that they have to make that request again because mm -hmm. it used to be good for two general election cycles. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, I know that we sent out a card to everyone who had been, and this was last year though, sent out a card to everyone who had had a request on file before to remind them that they needed to, to sign up again. Mm -hmm. Got another question. Mm -hmm. Okay. We want to know why did the law change for the vote by mail? Sure, uh, the state changed it. Uh, okay. Some of that was the security, because um, you know I think we all hear about, hey, I got a ballot for someone who hasn't lived here mm -hmm. for two years. Uh -huh. um, and so that's why that request is, has to be re-upped uh, every election cycle. And then you also have to give your driver's license or that last four of the social so that there's a little extra layer of, yeah. of security right. uh, when, when that happens. So uh, the state changed it, the legislators changed it. Uh, but I think uh, when we start talking about election security mm. and integrity, you know, making sure only people that have requested mm -hmm. that ballot get it, mm -hmm. um, and that you don't have these ballots for people that haven't lived there anymore. Absolutely. Because I always like to say is is that if if you're leaving town, you're worried about shutting off the power, the water, getting out of town. <laughs> you're not worried about calling the supervisor of elections to nope. let them know that you've moved. Now, I will say the state's doing a good job with this. Is that if you go to another state and return your driver's license, they're now sending us a list of those people that have surrendered their driver's license really? in another state. So we can start that process of, of contacting the, the voter to see if they've um, you know, moved out of state. To not, and because there's uh -huh. certain, I mean, yes, I may have moved, but I'm still in Florida or something like that. So, uh, so just How long us, can that stay like that? Uh, it just varies. I mean, it, it, until you establish yourself somewhere else, you know, okay. sometimes you have people that, okay. that travel the country in an RV. Mm -hmm. And so it's that place where they last yeah. lived <laughs> Not, right? A couple of years we can do that. Um, and, and so there's all sorts of laws and rules and federal rules and, and things like that, especially when it comes to military voters. Uh, if someone's on deployment or a spouse of a military, uh -huh. they can, again, if they've established here, uh, as they move around, they can still continue to vote, vote here. Question. Let's say I am, I moved. Mm -hmm. yes. My driver's license hasn't been yes. changed. Sure. I come to the poll that I went to where my driver's license mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. What, the, the, there you go, I see he's going, uh-uh, okay mm -hmm. now. What do I do in a right. situation like that? So when you check in, they're gonna ask you if, if the information's still correct. Mm -hmm. If it's not, you say, no, I've moved, and you give them your new address, they, they can tell you where you need to go if it needs to be somewhere else. Okay. So as long as you're already registered, you can, well, we, you would have to go to that new location to vote, and they would update your voter registration and, and give it a couple minutes, and, and then you can, you can vote. So, um, but you need to go to your new location, not your old location. Okay. Um, even though my driver's license says the e old location. Even though, right. So, um, and, and just, you know, bring in some information of, of that you've gotten that new, uh, you're at that new that place. That you have to know. Yep. Information like what? My power bill, my gas bill, my That'd what? Be, yes, yes, all of that. Okay. I'm Any saying that, that rather, because I don't yeah. want anybody to be uh, pushed away mm -hmm. to, to lose the fact to vote because Correct. of you had to make something happen uh, in your personal life yes. that you could not stop right. mm -hmm. and you didn't get the chance. Like you said, I, I'm not thinking about going to get that change right now. I got to go get this power turned on. Exactly. You know, right. so I want everybody to make sure that the vote is counted because, you know, I'm just going to be transparent because there have been some things, there have been things that come up and say, okay, they will find a way for you not to vote. Mm -hmm. That's the way the community felt. Mm -hmm. Right. And we don't want that. And, and so, you, but you also talk about transparency. Right. Um, and so I would say, you know, we, we post when we're going to open these vote by mail uh -huh. ballots. We have an observation room that you can come watch us do this and watch this process mm -hmm. of people taking the, the ballot out of the envelope mm -hmm. and then watching them get tabulated. Oh, really? Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Every, everything we do is, is public meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, we, you know, we, we want to be open and transparent. We have, you know, rooms with, with glass all around it so people can see what's going on. We have microphones so they can hear what's, what's going on. Um, but, but yes, we want, we want the, the voter to, to, to feel not feel disenfranchised. 
and and that they come in and their voice gets to be heard and so uh, wow. we do try to make that as easy as, as possible but Absolutely. but yes you, you, you do want to make sure because if you move it may mean that you're you you have that ECUA race on your exactly. ballot instead of the county commission exactly. race or something like that and so we, we want to make sure that you, that you're voting in the, in the right precinct no you know it's something else I want to share uh, we've been on the air now for about for 40 minutes 45 minutes and you gave a number a minute ago since we've been on the air that you yes. check your computer mm -hmm. of yes. how many people have already gone to vote yes. since we've been here. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. And so. now that was how many, and we, I hear your buzz going off we, now. We, we, had <laughs> 100, we had 114 after 35 minutes of the polls being open this that's morning right. already voted this morning. That's right. So that's yeah, right. Yes. make it happen, people. Yes. Make it happen. And, and again, it, it, this is a great, so you can track that on our website too. As I keep telling everybody go to our website, but it's uh, in the bottom, there's a red box that says unofficial voter turnout. You can see how many uh, vote by mail ballots have been received. And then you can also see how many people have, have cast their ballot through, through early vote. And then you can actually break it down by site to see how many people have been at each specific site. Now, I have a question about, we were talking about the nonpartisan. Mm -hmm. I don't think people understand that. They know that they can vote within their party on certain parts of the ballot. Can you explain more the nonpartisan and how that um, changes between the primary and the general? Sure. Um, so as I said, we have 227 different ballot styles ooh, ooh, for this geez, election, that's a lot. Yes. right? So most of those precincts are going to have at least three. Um, there's one that has five. Uh, but that's because we have this closed primary system and you're, and you're voting in that primary. So usually on a no, nonpartisan primary ballot, you would have judges. We don't have any judges that had opposition this time, okay. so those aren't on there. You have your, those school board races because those are non-party affiliate uh, uh -huh, uh, nonpartisan right. elections. Right. Um, and you have those universal primaries that, mm -hmm. that are uh, eligible. Uh, in November, each precinct has the same ballot. Uh -huh. uh, and so we'll only have like 86 ballot styles then. <laughs> only and, 86, right? Uh, but, but whenever you go to the precinct, everybody gets the same ballot, right? And so uh, we just take the, the one off the top of the pad and hand it to you and, and, and ready to go. So uh, in November, everybody will have the same ballot style and, and, and one ballot to vote. Oh, wonderful. Well, we gotta go take a break. But what we're gonna talk about next is what to look for on that ballot, because you know, I just really wanna cover that so people will know what they're looking for, yes. what you know, to familiarize themselves mm -hmm. with a few things, because some people, oh my God, what is this? All of, you know, mm -hmm. don't understand it. Right. I wanna make sure that it's clear yes. that they understand what it is that they're looking at. We're gonna share that and more right here when we return on Sunshine's Corner. I just remembered it's election day. Are you going to vote? I don't know. I don't think I'll have time today. Millions of eligible voters in America never make it to the polls or even register to vote. When you don't vote, you're letting other people make decisions for you and pick the things your taxes will pay for. Voting is more than a civic duty. It gives you a voice about the priorities and the future of your community and our nation. Voting gives you a seat at the table. Do you want to create but don't know where to start? Our new fabric line will inspire you. If you can dream it, we can help you make it. From using kits that include everything you would need to taking classes to create something more personalized, Daryl's is the place for you. No matter if you're just beginning or experienced, Daryl's has you covered. Find us at 6705 North Davis Highway. Open 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday and 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturdays. The Reesburg Institute, Pensacola's Ear, Nose, Throat, and Voice Center. We welcome you to visit us at our convenient Davis Highway location in Pensacola. At the Reesburg Institute, we offer the most advanced treatment available in a calm, stress-free environment. Since 2014, we've performed over a thousand cases in Office of Balloon Sinus Surgery, as well as septoplasty and nasal procedures using oral sedation. The in-office procedures result in a faster healing time. Visit us and feel the difference. Hello, my name is Eric, and this was my first visit to Little John's. The selection, uh, the pricing here, and the customer service were outstanding. I would definitely recommend. Uh, the staff was very friendly, and they'll get you what you need. Hi, this is John with Little John's Big and Tall here in Pensacola, Florida at 5700 North Davis Highway. Check us out at littlejohnsbigandtall.com where we can take care of you with extra large up to 14X and large tall to 6X tall.
And welcome back to the hottest spot in town. I love it when I say that because this is the hot spot. When you want to find out what's happening, all you got to do is tune in each and every weekday at 9 o'clock because we're going to tell you what you need to know, even if it doesn't feel good when you give it to you. Well, listen to this. We had a, a, a text message that came in, uh, Robert, and the question was, can a convicted felon vote? And so it depends on if those voting rights have been restored, if they've, if they've met the requirement of the sentencing, if they've paid fines. Um, then they can they can have their voting right restored. Uh, so we, we send out letters every week of, of people that have been found guilty. Uh, we get the list from the clerk of courts, and so we send out certified letters to let them know that, that their, their voting right has uh, fallen into one of these categories and, and could be taken away. Um, and so you say fall in one of these categories, like of, of a felon, okay, um, or, or it could be mentally incapacitated, something like that. So, um, and, and, and that's the mental state can determine what they can vote. If, if it's been deemed that they they can't make their own decisions, really, mm -hmm. unbelievable. Yeah, so, I didn't know that. Yep, uh, <laughs> but again, it, once that's done, you know, there are certain felons that would have to go in front of the clemency board to have their rights restored. Uh, I think sexual offenders and things like that would have to, to go in front of that clemency board. Um, but uh, So a, sexual, a, a sex offender is considered a felon. Yes. And they have to go through... I heard you say something. I got so many questions. The clock is ticking. Yeah. But no, I heard you say that, the, that the, if they paid their fees. Mm -hmm. Do all of them have to pay fees? Uh, it depends on what, what, what was the, the order. Um, usually there's some court costs or if there's a restitution or something like that. Wow. Um, it, and again, that, and I think for a lot, that's, that's what's prevented yes. people from, from being the able fees. to register is the fees. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Come on, people. Do something to get those fees paid because your vote matters and you can get those restored. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, it, it may take a minute, but start early and you'll have it ready by the time it's uh, election time. You know yes. what I mean? Those are some deep things I did not yes. realize. But the fact of it is, we have asked so many questions today. And I love the fact that the community is inquisitive mm -hmm. to find out and not just sitting there. Yes. Right. Yes. I'm not going to ask the question because I'll say this, and you, you hit this earlier, Yolanda. This primary election is so important. Very. Do not think you're just going to wait till the general election. All right. This is your foundation right here. Mm -hmm. Because don't sit at home and say, no, I won't do it on this. I'm not going to worry about these. But yes, it does. It affects you. Because I'm going to say this because I want you to realize getting ready for the general election. Because in even the things that you may not know about if you have mm -hmm. not gone to research, mm -hmm. you need to research Project yes. 25, uh, 2025. I want you to do that on your own time. Yes. You go and you research that and you're going to realize how important it is to vote. That's just for me. That's just yes. my opinion. Sure. Because that is no joke. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk a, bit, a little bit about what's on the ballot. There you go. Talk uh, about, about it. this, okay? Don't get me started. Right. So, so, <laughs> so for the Republican, the Democrat, they both have a, a state uh, U.S. senator uh, contest. So exactly. they, they're going to pick who's going to meet up against in November. The Republicans also have a Congress, U.S. congressional mm -hmm. race. And then you drop into your county uh, races. So uh, District 1 has a county commission race and an ECUA race. County Commission District 2 doesn't uh, have any other county issues. Uh, District 3 has the ECUA race. District 4 has the county commission and the school board race. And then you also have two precinct committee men and women races uh, that are on there. And then District 5 has, has the school board race. Oh, wow. Uh, so those are all races that, that will be going on in, within the counties. Now come November, now you're gonna start getting into amendments. So we're gonna be, oh, have yes. six amendments on the ballot. Uh, that are set by the state, we're going to have one local amendment regarding the half cent sales tax yes. for the uh -huh. schools. Yes. Um, so that's also on there. But then you will have your president, your Senate, your of Congress, course. all everything else that, that people are, are used to seeing. We've had a number of questions. Why isn't the president on this one? Uh -huh. That's that's November. Uh, and so, but that's that's when you'll probably have a front and back. Uh, <laughs> hopefully we can fit it in just front and back right. uh, page ballot. Not three pages. <laughs> I hope no, no, no. Um, but again, we'll get those sample ballots out by mid-October so that they can start to research those. You know, mm -hmm. you need to go on, and, and there will be a lot of information out there about the different amendments that are that are on the ballot. And, and yes, do your research. Uh, when Absolutely. You come in. And you can bring your sample ballot into the to the polling location if. If you want to mark which one you want to vote for, you can bring that sample ballot in. And uh, just watch it to go back. And, 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 and just transfer the, you, you can cheat off of your, that's a good, your that's little a good sample thing ballot. That, that's a good thing to convey there because a lot of people try to memorize. Try, right. Mm -hmm. And you forget. 
Yeah, I was thinking as he was speaking also is we have these times to vote. And for people who can't or have work restrictions where they can't um, maybe vote from nine to six, these polls are open from seven to seven so that you can get out there. So you might want to look at dates and times to make sure you have adequate time to get to out get to that. voting so that you're not restricted by getting off work at five and not mm -hmm. making it to the polls. Right. Absolutely. And again, for the early vote, any one of those 10, you could you could you get can to it. so if you can get there by 6 p.m. you you can vote uh, during the early voting for October uh, October 21st to November 2nd mm -hmm. 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Yep. Uh, so those are Saturdays and one Sunday um, that will be there. We've already had our Sunday voting, oh, which man. is it, it's slow. It's tough on the poll workers mm -hmm. just because you don't have a lot of people coming in. Mm -hmm. But again, it hopefully gives somebody that opportunity that's that's not available Monday through Saturday to come in and vote. No doubt. And everybody, I just want to reiterate everything that we've talked about today. And you said something earlier, uh, Robert, that a person can come in and got this big glass. They can watch a process that mm -hmm. you all do. I want to encourage you. Go there. Mm -hmm. I mean, learn. Right. You know, soothe that curiosity yes. and find out for yourself. Or, or uh, you know, we already have all of our poll workers for the August uh, 20th primary. But if you want to be a poll worker, we, we do have a, a, a long list of people that have already uh, sent in their application to do it. But if, if you want to be a part of the process, uh, if you want to see what's really going on in, the, in there, come be, a, come be a poll worker. Be a part of the process and you see for yourself how strong our elections are in Florida. Because wow. I think what you hear from a lot of other states, you don't see happen in Florida. You know, I say we have redundant procedures mm -hmm. to our redundant procedures. We check things three or four different ways at the end of the night to make sure the numbers match up, that we've had the number of, of voters versus the number of ballots that have gone out, how many have been tabulated. We check all those things multiple ways because if we're one ballot off, we want to know why. Exactly. And, and I would say that that is across the state. That is, that is how we are. That, that is our desire. That is, is what we want to, I'd say one, that's what the citizens of well, the certainly. state of Florida have come to expect in Florida, in Florida elections, right? No We're doubt. the gold standard and it's not by accident. After no 2000, doubt. right? We exactly. said, we're not, we're not going to be like that again. <laughs> and so uh, it's not by accident. It's what's, what the state's allowed us to do is that I, again, I've tabulated. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the results are, but I've already counted these vote by mail ballots. So by the time election day rolls around, I can focus on election day and running 80 precincts in 72 locations and making sure that works. And then within 30 minutes of the polls closing, I have to release those vote by mail results mm -hmm. and the early vote by uh, early vote results, which could maybe be 60% of the vote. That's a pretty large sample size that, to come out right. within <laughs> by 7.30 to let you know how, how the votes are going. So unless it's already a really close race, that's probably going to be what the, the final no result is. I tell you guys, believe it or not, can you believe our time is up? Believe, oh my goodness. Oh my God, we were getting into this. It's so great. But let me do this once more. People, my dear friends, family, if you've got questions, call 850-595-3900. They're there to talk. The phones are working now. 850-595-3900. Let me say thank you guys for getting up early to come in. I mean, this has been a fantastic hour. We've covered a lot. And believe me, I will invite you back because oh, yes. you're going to see a lot of us coming up to uh, November. Yes. I think that's a lot that we need to convey. Yeah. Yeah. My dear friends, it's been a fantastic day, but it's time for Sunshine to say bye for now. But listen, remember, in my part 10, I always leave you the same way. Never lose your focus. Always remember to keep God first in whatever you do. So until tonight at 630 for another night of taking care of the body I invite you to come out and join in with me and exercise at the Fricker Center. Until then, my friends, know that I love you with a perfect kind of love. Keep shouting while I'm gone. Sunshine's Corner, being brought to you by Quint and Rishi Studer.